Okay, so hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining our GSA Student Leadership Council info session. Um, it's really great to see you all. And I like, I'd like to note real quick that we are recording this. So feel free to turn your cameras off if needed. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Ev. I use he, him pronouns and I am the GSA program administrator for the Safe Schools program for LGBTQ students. And the Safe Schools program is a joint initiative between the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Mass Commission on LGBTQ Youth. Um, and I am joined here today by five of our wonderful student leaders who will be sharing their personal experiences on the council, as well as answering any questions that you may have. Um, but first, before we meet our panelists, I'd like to turn it over to Zeta to speak more about what the GSA Leadership Council does and how it works. So over to you, Zeta. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Zeta, and I use she, they pronouns. I'm a senior at Grafton High School and a member of the Central Region. I'm happy to tell you all about this wonderful opportunity of joining the GSA Leadership Council. We're a group of LGBTQ plus youth, people of color, members of school communities and supporting adults who work together to educate and promote inclusivity through our Massachusetts school districts and communities. The council divides its members up into regions where each group will work, on, work together to facilitate regional meetings. And has anyone been to a regional meeting before? Cool, good. They can be very similar to your school GSA meetings, except um, the different GSAs in separate Massachusetts regions come together for one big meeting. There is also what we call state meetings where all regions in the council meet up, usually at, Mass at the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in Malton. The main difference between the regional meetings and the state meetings is that the state meetings, we focus on learning material to organize and present at the regional meetings. We also share highlights from our regional meetings and discuss ways on how we can improve the next meeting. Applications for the Student Council are open and I'm sure Ev will send all of you the link to apply after this info session. And if you can, you can find the application on the Commission's website. I strongly encourage you all to apply, even if you're interested in making social change in your community. There's only so much change you can do as individuals in your school, so this is your next step to getting involved. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Zeta. Um, so now I'd like to welcome the rest of our panelists to all introduce yourselves um, with your name, pronouns, your region, and a random or fun fact about yourselves. So we can start with Maria. To you. Hi, I'm Maria. I use she, they pronouns, and I'm from Southeast region. Um, fun fact about me. <laughs> I can speak fluent Spanish. <laughs> um, now, Jazzy. Hi, um, I'm Jazzy. I use she, her pronouns, but I'm starting to lean towards to she, they don't know yet. Um, I'm a part of the Northeast region. Um, it's a great region. And a fun fact about me is that I know how to play three instruments and I do a lot of cooking in my spare time. I'll pass it to Zeta. Hello, I'm Zeta. I use she they pronouns. I'm from Central Region. I go to Grafton High School um, and I'm a senior. I've been on the council for two years. This is going to be my third if um, Jeff accepts me. But um, a random fun fact, I'll just say I got accepted to Salem State and I'm going for criminal justice this year. I will pass it to Ink. I'm very scared that I'm going to be a little bit laggy because everything on my computer right now is kind of going crazy. Um, so my name is Ink. I use he, they pronouns, and I'm from the greater Boston region. And fun fact about me. Um, I like to cosplay. I own many, many bags worth of wigs and makeup and costumes. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so who's, who's left? Callie? 
Um, hello, my name is Hallie. I use they, them, and she, her pronouns. I am from Weston region. And a fun fact about me is that I love to read. My room is full of books. I've run out of bookshelf space. Um, but I am always looking forward to a new book. Awesome. Um, so now we can kick the panel off with our first question. And that is, how is this different from a typical high school GSA club? In my opinion, it's better. Um, there's a lot more outreach that you can do. And it's just cool because like a lot of towns in Massachusetts are really small and I'm guaranteeing all of you can relate to me when you when I say that there's not a lot of LGBTQ members in your community. So it's kind of like you're meeting a bunch of new people that you can relate to. And it's like, it's very, it's a good safe place. And um, a big part is, is yeah, is that it's outside of your school. So you have more of a chance to kind of be yourself and not worry about your school community as much judging you. I feel like another big difference between like the, um, the council and like a school GSA would also be, there's a lot more like opportunities to learn about different topics um, and it really helps with like learning how to like how like other people deal with the issues that um, like people of color and LGBTQ people deal with all the time. So it's it's nice. And the the you always find like a lot of new friends as well. There's so much more structure. Um, and there's always something to do and something to learn. Um, I definitely agree with what everyone else was saying. It's, I think it's a lot more fun. Um, there are just so many huge opportunities that it can offer. Awesome. Um, so our next question is, why did you each decide to join the council? All right, so um, I decided to join the council because um, I just like wanted to get more outreach into my school so that more people could learn about the LGBTQ um, community. So because like my school's GSA was like pretty small until after I joined the council. So then we started to get more members because I started to, um, you know, email teachers asking them if um, they wanted to like introduce what GSA was to their students and everything. So it's like a really good opportunity to like help out your school's GSA if you like want to get more members in and if you want to like help out and all of those things. And it's like just a really good and amazing experience that I've had. I remember um, honestly hating my school GSA. I was the president of it and it was just so difficult because I don't know, everyone in it, I felt like didn't wanna be there and it was just difficult to get things done. Um, and I was getting very frustrated. So I remember I was talking with Jason who used to be um, another facilitator at the council and he was saying that I'd like you know, the GSA council. And I decided no matter how anxious I was, I was like, I'm going to apply and do it. Um, and I mostly did it because I wanted to learn from a bunch of other like-minded people. And I wanted to improve like my public speaking skills. And I honestly just wanted to learn a lot more about um, like minority groups too, because I was honestly very ignorant about all of that, even though I'm a member of the LGBTQ community. <laughs> Um, I joined because a friend recommended it to me and she came up to me one day and said, I think you'll really like this and then sat down with me and walked me through the application. Um, and I was nervous at first because I'm not always great about meeting new people, but everyone has been so nice and it's been so much fun and I'm very glad that she convinced me to do this. I was also told to join by a friend. Um, she the um we we were part of like we are part of the uh school gsa like our school gsa um i joined last year and um 
she wanted me to join because she thought it'd be like a good experience to be in here and I think it was because she had been here before so she knew what it was like and she was like you know it's it's a really nice learning experience and I think it'd be really fun if you joined and I did and she was right <laughs> Yeah, I was recommended by the leader of the school GSA who recently graduated. Um, he would bring me to all of the regional meetings and it was just so much fun. And um, he said, you know, if you like this, there, there are even, even more things that you can do. So I signed up and I was like, this Gray, you better not be setting me up to embarrass myself anywhere. But um, everyone is just so accepting and amazing and so willing to teach and to learn. And I think that's a really great thing about um, being part of the council is, oh no, my internet connection is unstable, but yeah. Oh, um, great, that sounds really wonderful, thanks. So the next question is, what has been your favorite part about being part of the council? I made a lot of friends. I didn't have any friends before I came here. And that's one of my favorite parts because, um, I don't know, I just feel happy whenever I'm there. That's one of my favorite parts. I always look forward to the meetings um, and I don't look forward to a lot of things. So. There's a lot to learn and um, everyone's really supportive and it's been really nice to hear about everyone's like st different stories and experiences in their lives. Um, and everyone's just like really welcoming. So uh, it's easy to make friends and it's just, it's just great. It's just great. <laughs> One of my favorite parts is that I'm always learning something new that I can bring back to my school's GSA and everyone else to help find new things to do and new ways to get involved in my community. And I think that's been really awesome. My favorite part about it is probably that it's a place where you genuinely feel listened to. Um, I don't get that a lot. I don't, I don't really have a lot of spaces where I feel like my opinion is valued. Um, but in the council, I can tell that everyone, everyone really cares about what I have to say. And that's, that's really comforting for me. Um, it's definitely a place where, where you, can, you can feel that kind of acceptance that you might not get somewhere else. Okay, so someone wanted to know um, what does the commitment look like and how do you deal with meetings during the school day? So pretty much what the commitment looks like is you don't like have to join every like every meeting. Like sometimes I have to miss a meeting once or twice because of school, but we do have um, an excuse absence form for you guys um like even for the regional meetings you have the excuse absent form that you can send into your attendance administrator or your teacher so let them know that you'll be absent that day because like uh, it is in it, it does involve the um elementary school of the, 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 the it's a really long word um but pretty much like it involves that so it, it does involve school so you do have an excuse absence for it so like it the school isn't like too much of a worry if you have the um, absence form. I know that we do ask that you try your absolute best to make it to all of the regional meetings, which are the ones that um, as groups we will be facilitating. 
Um, so you'll be responsible for running the meeting, basically like the teacher. Um, but the state meetings where we meet as a whole council um, in Malden, those ones aren't mandatory to go to. But if you can make it to maybe one or two throughout the year, that'd be great because they're really helpful and really fun. Um, but otherwise, you should not be putting this over your mental health, but it should be a good priority. Um, and it's definitely, it shouldn't be stressful either about the commitment to you. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, and what Jazzy said, um, if your school for some reason has an issue we're give, with giving you an excused absence, um, you can just contact like Ev, Kim or Jeff and they will make sure that you get excused absences. Cool. So applying to the GSA Leadership Council sounds sort of intimidating. Can I still apply if I don't have any professional leadership experience? Yes, you can. Um, so when I applied, I had zero leadership experience. Um, but I was like, this looks fun. So if you want to apply, just apply and you can always if you get accepted, you can always just say you're no longer interested. Like there's no harm in applying, you know? And also, I think um, the, the council really helps if you want to learn about leadership and how to go about leading like GSAs or even just in general. So you don't really need um, that much leadership experience or even any like it it just um, it just helps to be here to learn you know yeah so hopping on what maria said i didn't have any leadership experience when i first joined but like as like we started to like keep doing the meetings and like learn more i started to gain like more um like leadership <clears throat> type of abil like ability i don't know the other word for it i forgot but pretty much like you don't need it um honestly it's like you learn throughout the way like how to learn how, like you learn how to be a leader amongst your peers and it's just a really good experience so I feel like that maybe the only skill you should have when applying is active listening or just listening um because if you don't have any leadership experience like I did um I came in with an open mind and mostly just listened for my at the summit as opposed to like necessarily participating but I would just um, make sure that you are willing to learn and are open. Okay, so what is the difference between the summit and the council? I'll go. Um, so summit is, so when you're, you know, applying to be a part of the council and you're accepted, the summit is basically a like two or three day training that we go to, um, to learn basically all the skills that we need to learn to be a part of the council, um, and go over all the material and ideas that we want to cover throughout the year in the council um but the summit's like the best part of it um you get to meet everyone you kind of come out of your shell a little bit so the difference is is that summit is once throughout the year and then the council is all year round if that makes sense yeah the summit is like the best place to um if you ever have a chance to go, you definitely should. It's the best place to learn about everything that we're going to be doing. And um, it's just great. This this past year was my first summit, unless I'm remembering wrong. Time is a flat circle. Um, but yeah, it was really great going to summit. Um, 
it's where we learn what we're going to be doing on council and state of Yeah, so could someone describe kind of the structure of Summit a little bit? I can. So, um, wait, the other panelists, have you been to an in-person summit before or just the online one? Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be having the in-person one this year. I hope that we do because, no offense, it's way better than the Zoom one, but the Zoom one was still pretty good. Um, so basically, um, we will meet at UMass Amherst and, oh my god, we are? That's good. That's fun. Okay. Um, and all day we kind of um, learn it's like school kind of but less structured we um, kind of have different activities different groups where we learn about like um, racial justice lgbtq um, sex education homelessness youth homelessness the school to prison pipeline and tell me if i'm missing anything else but we do kind of groups on that and we do a lot of discussions we have a talent show at the end of the second night, which is quite wonderful. Um, we are fed too. We have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and there's always food available. Um, but it's really just a lot of learning and participating. And we sleep there. Awesome. So what in-person things are there um, that you all do as part of the council? And this might not be as applicable currently, but maybe Zeta, since you've been here longer before COVID. So in person, um, we do the summit, obviously, um, the state meetings um, in Malden at the Massachusetts Department for Secondary Elementary Education. Um, and then we do our regional meetings, which depending on which schools in which regions in Massachusetts sign up, we will be going there. Um, I don't know, we also have a lot of people on the council who are involved with like GLAD um, and PFLAG. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to hear about getting involved with those. But I haven't done any of those yet. I've really just done um, the, the council um, and the activities that come with that. Um, so in what ways has your time on council impacted other aspects of your life? Um, so like, how has it impacted you personally? I feel like during this year for me, it's really helped me um, like talk to people more um, because of, you know, COVID, we're quarantining still, so like we're in our houses. I'm mostly at my house uh, for the most part. So um, being on the council helped me to talk to people um, who are like involved in it and like outside of it as well a lot more. Cause I'm like, you know, maybe if you're gonna have to talk to people at some point, you should talk to them more to get used to it again, right? So it really helped with that. And um, I'm pretty extroverted. So without this, it would have been really rough for me to just deal with everything. Um, and and the people the people on the council are great. And uh, the, um, the advisors, everyone, Ev, you're all so great. It's like, everyone's so great. So um, talking to everyone is just amazing. Along with Maria, I'm a, I'm also very extroverted, so it um, helped throughout this online year to um, kind of keep my social skills. Um, and also, what was it? I came here when I was like a sophomore, um, and being in the council made me definitely less judgmental um, of other people because I met so many people where um, I guess stereotypes aren't real. I learned, I kind of learned that um, like you cannot judge a book by its cover, no matter how cliche that is from all the people that I've met. 
Um, and it's definitely impacted the way that I treat other people and the way that I treat myself, which I'm very grateful for. It's also just like a great connection to like the outside world. Um, I know like even in my town, like there's like five people and everyone knows everything about each other and it's weird and it's boring. Um, but getting to getting to know other people who have similar experiences and who are interested in the same things that you are that aren't it's just it's just a great way to branch out and it's definitely helped me in branching out and being more social yeah i know like for me um it's like helped my mental health a lot because like i had like a pretty bad mental health during the beginning of covid because like i couldn't really see my friends i couldn't really talk to anyone and it was just like really boring staying at home all day being quarantined so like coming to like this council it, like really helped with my mental health and i got to like talk to more people met so many more people like a lot of friends like maria because we talk a lot <laughs> just like out of the summit and it's just like really fun and it's a great experience okay so someone wanted to know how can i become more active with gsa In my experience, um, to become more active is to join this council um, and kind of reach outside of your school community because there's honestly so much that you can do in your school community in my experience. I'm not speaking for everyone, um, but I've kind of just joined this council and done my own thing like for the past um, year um, me and my friend decided to do like a yard sale rummage sale where we get donations of clothing stuff like that you donate to the goodwill um, and then we sell it and donate the uh, was it the proceeds to an organization of our choice we're actually having one on May 1st this is me advertising for it um, and we're going to donate to the Asperger's autism network and then we're donating the leftover clothes to homeless shelters throughout Worcester um, so it's kind of taking it upon yourself to find other outreach programs that you can do um and one of those will be joining this council because you can get a lot of really good opportunities through this yeah what they said is absolutely true um i know before before i joined um before i was like invited to the meeting by the person who used to lead the school GSA, I felt really disconnected from the community. Um, but joining the council just gives you so many more opportunities to feel like you're a part of something, which is just so useful and helpful. Um, I feel like we really do do a lot of important stuff. Um, we, what we do matters and feeling like what you do matters is a great motivator to keep, you know, doing good stuff. Great, going off of that, Maria, I'm gonna put you on the spot because I know that you did a really great um, initiative at your school in terms of making the um, graduation gown color change. Can you speak on that a little or like share that with everyone? Yeah, so basically um, at our school, we used to have two different like uh, graduation gown colors and it was blue and white. And like um, it used to be a rule a couple years ago that um, like, you know, the girls have white and boy, boys have blue. That's my sister.
I'm sorry, I already told her I had a meeting and she still came in. Um, anyway, <laughs> a couple of years ago, we had a like, there was like an actual school rule that um, like uh, people who were assigned female at birth um, were supposed to wear white and people who were assigned male at birth were supposed to wear blue. And um, a couple years ago they changed that so it wasn't an official rule but it was still tradition so like people still went with that and um like it 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 like it wasn't very inclusive for people who are non-binary and people who were trans so um a student a senior uh last year um made a petition and she got like a few of us uh, in the GSA to like share it with people, like to share that we had the petition um, with people um, so that we could get it signed and so that the school administration could like help us do something about it. And eventually they, like it got to them and, and they formed a like um, committee to talk about um, why it was a like good thing to change it from two colors to just one or to something else and i was on that and we we talked a lot jeff was there um about like the how um it would be a lot more inclusive if we just had one color and a, a lot more unifying because you're graduating right um, you want to all be there as one class, not as like a bunch of different people on their own. You're there as a class, so you're there together and you want everyone to feel included and you want everyone to feel good about the day that you're like the reason you're there is just you're leaving together. And so um, we talked about like uh, what gender actually is and and like it was very educational. Um, I learned some things that I, I didn't know from Jeff and from other people that were there. And I helped um, other people as well, like talk about um, what they didn't know. There was, there was like a really nice experience with uh, one of the people that was there. And she, she was like asking me and the, um, someone else, uh, a cup like a bunch of questions about things that she didn't know or understand about like gender and sexuality and it was so it was so good um and it was really nice to like talk to these people and have like genuine conversations it was a really good experience and it helped me learn a lot about um just talking to people and um, leadership as well because I was supposed to I was there like um, for like the junior class, I was supposed to be there, like representing the junior class. And it was, it was really interesting. And I really, um, I really think that that was, uh, one of the big reasons along with my friend telling me to join the council. It was one of the big reasons that I joined the council because I wanted to do that again. So if, if you, if you've done stuff like this before, um, you should definitely join the council if you liked it because um, it'll give you a lot of opportunities to do it again. Thanks so much. Um, along those lines, we have themes for each regional meeting. And I was wondering if anyone would want to share some of those themes and what um, we have actually done in the meetings to work towards that. Um, so opening it up to anyone. Um, recently, this past summer, we have done a lot of work around racial justice, um, which is something very important and something that all people should be educated on. Um, we learned about the different kinds of, like the different levels of racism. We learned about different ways to um, recognize it and to support people of color whose voices aren't being heard. And I think that's really useful because I wasn't super educated on 
those issues, but I knew it was important and I really wanted to learn and the council definitely helped with that. And then I got to teach some of the kids at my school, which was really great. Going off of what Ink said, um, I think another important thing that we learn throughout all of um, the different topics is like how to confront someone who is ignorant to certain topics, such as racial justice. Like if someone, uh, if someone says a microaggression or something, um, we kind of learn how to respectfully talk about it as opposed to resorting to anger, which a lot of people um, do when it comes to very sensitive stuff like this. Um, so I don't know, I really value that lesson that we learned throughout it. Um, this past meeting, um, we also looked at education and how um, these topics can come up in school and how they often don't come up in school and how you can change that. So um, we also did an activity where you could develop an action plan um, towards how you can change that. So we looked at who you could talk to and of what would need to happen and um, what sort of steps you could take towards making changes to have a more inclusive curriculum in our school systems. Awesome. Um, thanks so much for sharing. Our final question is, what advice do you have for someone who might be unsure about applying? My advice would be just go for it. Um, there's nothing to lose if like you apply for it. It's, as I keep saying, a, an amazing experience. It's really fun. It's very interactive. You meet a lot of new people there's no way to go wrong when applying for this council. It's, you meet so many new people and they're all absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so I would just say, if you if you are iffy about applying, um, I would recommend just applying because it's just a really good experience. I agree with Jazzy. I was nervous about applying. I think when I was a freshman, I was filling up the application and then I got scared and didn't apply. And I kind of regret that because I wish I joined sooner. Um, but like I said earlier, if you decide you don't want to do it, we're obviously not going to force you. Um, but we are strongly encouraging you to because it's there's definitely no negatives to joining at all. Um, and from my experience, I walked in knowing nothing, and I walk out of every meeting learning something new. It's just like, like, so totally worth it. Like, a couple, a couple moments of anxiety um, is nothing in comparison to everything that you can do and learn um, while on the council and at Summit and at the meetings and stuff um there's there's really no reason not to it's just so it's just so great I, it's great i love you guys <laughs> and i feel like if if one of the reasons that you're like nervous about joining or like questioning if you should join is because um, you don't do so well in like large groups of people, it's always okay to take a step back. Um, it, like there's been many times where like uh, me or someone else have been like, you know, anxious or really stressed out about something. And it's, it's always okay to be like, all right, I need to take a step back and like breathe for a couple minutes and then if you can come back, if you feel like you can come back, you can. But if you can't, you can talk to the other people who are with you in your region and 
they're always like super understanding um and usually there's like at, at least a little like at least a couple of weeks of like preparation for these meetings so it it's okay you know um just take care of yourself first and yeah Also, I feel like um, maybe going to summit in person this year might be very nerve wracking to some people. Um, and just to let you know, um, the staff um, and the other student facilitators are there to support you and are there for you. I know next year, I don't know if that's what I'm called, but I'm going to be a staff because I'll no longer be in high school and I will be there to support you, even if you're not in my region. So you're never going to be alone unless you want to be alone, obviously. Um, and like Maria said, there's going to be lots of preparation, so there's really nothing to worry about. Okay, um, thank you so much to all of our panelists. I'm just going to open everything up to a Q&A from the audience now, so if anyone in the audience has any questions that you would like to ask anyone in particular or the whole group, feel free to unmute yourselves or write in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna flip that back to the panelists then and say, if you have anything else that you want to share about being on council that you feel you didn't get to convey yet, um, feel free to do so now as well. If you, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, if you join it and you don't like it for some reason, stick with it because it looks good on college applications, but I guarantee you, you will love it. <laughs> um, and, um, when I came in, I was very quiet and very reserved, and I was honestly kind of really mean. I don't know. That was just who I was, um, but the council opened me up, um, and I've had a lot of growth since then, um, especially since, you know, we're all young people in high school. I think this is a very important and I would say crucial part um, to growing and growing up, so we hope to see you there at our summit. Also, I'm not sure if it was mentioned yet, but um, the scheduling for this is fairly spaced out. So it's not like you're doing a lot all of the time. Um, the summit is three days in August and that's the longest that you're going for at a time. Um, there's state meetings every other month. And then on the opposite months, you have a regional meeting and you have the time in between those to prepare and those state meetings will help you prepare for the regional meetings. So there's plenty of time to plan things through and think things out and get yourself ready for what's happening. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone. I'm just going to stop recording now, um, but feel free to stay on and ask any questions that you think of. Um,